So it seems to be popular, like famous people at this conference are switching what they talk about versus what they submitted, kind of like what Brian did. Um, I thought I was going to be talking about uh, details about how to do this. Um, instead, I'm going to talk more about like what is quantum cryptography. So why are we doing this? Uh, Cloudflare is making the internet better. Part of how we're doing that is we're forcing quantum crypto on people. Um, people tell me I'm smart, so I'll, I'll tell you the secret. You just use words like quantum crypto. <laughs> um, quantum crypto is cool. Why not do it? It's better. So how are we going to do this? Salt is really pluggable if you have experience with salt. Um, however, the crypto backend is not pluggable. This is a problem. The transport layer is kind of pluggable, um, but both of those code layers are a mess. So as you can see, um, the crypto backend has uh, crept over time into these five files. So it's not a trivial thing to replace a crypto uh, thing in, in your project. So how are we going to do this? Either we need to um, do that extra hard work across all the transport backends because it's mixed together with the transport code, or we just come up with a whole new transport. However, while I was thinking about this, um, Daniel Wozniak at SaltStack actually merged his mega epic pull request to introduce uh, um, the WebSocket transport, which uses the Python SSL library to do MTLS. Um, by, you get it for free. It comes by default. However, is that good enough? Um, I didn't really have enough filler words for this slide. So I'm going to wait out the clock. So the change from Daniel uh, added the um, WebSockets via the, the async IO HTTP library. Um, you get the, the SSL primitives from the py default Python uh, distribution. However, SALT um, uses homegrown RSA and AES primitives um, it, it doesn't import a library. It uses them in its own mechanism. So everyone knows what TLS is, or in my case, pretends to know what it is. You connect to the server. You say, hey, I'm here. The server says, OK, here's your certificate. The client verifies it against the public list of certs. With MTLS, it's a little more complicated. So in, in this case, the client has a certificate. Um, it each has access to. Uh, uh, you could think of it as a self-science root cert. Um, I'm not going to go into those details. So why are we talking about WebSocket transports and MTLS when we're really supposed to be talking about quantum crypto? So um, the problem is quantum crypto is a newer technology, and it imposes uh, stuff on your crypto code that you wouldn't, the older libraries aren't going to be able to support. In addition to that, um, SALT is, is using the RSA and AES primitives directly, which is not good. So we should be really eliminating the custom key generation, validating, et cetera. The features a standard crypto library should be providing you anyway. All right, so um, what is post-quantum crypto? Basically. Larger key sizes, um, trade-offs in key size computational efficiency, ciphertext, or signature size. So really, quantum crypto isn't really that much different from regular crypto. It's just a little more complex. Um, isn't that how computers work? So this is uh, why is cryptography significant? If you look at the second paragraph there, you're trying to find, you're trying to reverse that function. It's not possible. If you want to do it, there's this thing called a general number field sieve, which is based on the Fermat uh, polynomial, or sorry, the Fermat factoring method. The computational complexity is there. It's a little more complex than that. So how are we going to do this in SALT? Um, upgrade to WebSockets. That sounds easy, right? Uh, add the post-quantum crypto key pairs to the masters and minions. 
um, up update everything to that, see if we can profit. Thanks. <laughs>